The theme of this year's tour is the War of 1812. This tour was proposed by Mr. Kurt Johnson, a lecturer, researcher, and board member of the Goulburn Museum. Mr. Johnson researched and wrote the biographies found in your tour booklets, and he has done a wonderful job. Today we are paying tribute to seven men and one woman. They played roles in the War of 1812, an event that I believe, and a lot of people believe, changed Canada's identity. William Brown Bradley. Lorsque William Brown Bradley avait 12 ans en 1783, il avait déjà vécu à Londres, en Angleterre, à Savannah, en Georgie, au nord-ouest de l'État de New York, et enfin dans la paroisse St. Mary's, au Nouveau-Brunswick. Son beau-père, John Jenkins, était un loyaliste qui avait combattu avec les Britanniques durant la guerre d'indépendance américaine. William Bradley était capitaine du 104e régiment de fantassins, cantonné à Fredericton. Et ce fut l'un des six régiments ayant reçu l'ordre de faire ce qui est historiquement appelé la marche hivernale. Une randonnée héroïque de 700 milles reliant Fredericton à Kingston de février à avril 1812. As a member of the 104th, William Bradley took part in battles at Sackett's Harbor, Lundy's Lane, Beaver Dams, Cape Vincent, and Fort George. As a half pay officer, he received a land grant and settled in Huntley Township with his wife, Catherine, and children. He was named the Justice of the Peace and performed marriages posting the notices on a large birch tree in front of his house. <laughs> you were a good and loyal soldier, first in America and then with the 104th Regiment of Foot. There was no better captain to his men, to lead them. It was a dreadful time. We were 554 men, six divisions, near 700 miles of marching through snow and cold and wind. Oh, the wind was fierce and supplies low. Today at Beechwood, we're dedicating our own plaque from the War of 1812 Graveside Recognition Project in a family tribute to Captain William Brown Bradley of the 104th New Brunswick Regiment. I teach history at Carleton University, including courses in local history and a seminar in uh, gravestones and cemeteries in which I partner with our friends here at Beechwood. But I was a genealogist a long time before I became a historian, and I've got a thick file on the Bradleys dating back to the 1970s when I corresponded with the Bradley, about the Bradley family history with the late Marjorie Moody of Stittsville and Dorothy Martin of Toronto. Now, I'm not a military historian, and I can't improve on what Kurt Johnson wrote about the 1812 service of Captain Bradley and his son, Anson Sands Bradley, in the booklet that accompanied Beechwood Cemetery's annual walking tour back in 2013. So I'm just going to summarize that briefly, and I'm going to add something in the little time that I have about their lives in the Ottawa area after the 1812 war. Now, Captain Bradley and Captain James Dent Weatherly, another colorful local personality, were the first retired officers to take up lands in March Township in 1819. Now, Bradley was immediately appointed a magistrate, and with his military experience, he was also named Lieutenant Colonel in the 1st Carleton Militia. He'd been born near Savannah in 1771, and he came to New Brunswick with his stepfather, a Loyalist officer, in 1783. Captain John Jenkins of the Glengarry Light Infantry, who had both arms shattered by cannon fire at the Battle of Ogdensburg in 1813, was a half-brother. Bradley joined the New Brunswick Militia at 22, and he served in the 104th Foot throughout the 1812 War. He led his company on the grueling 52-day overland forced march from Fredericton to Kingston in the dead of winter in 1813 to reinforce the British Army in Upper Canada against the advancing Americans. 
According to his obituary, Captain Bradley participated in the raid on Sackett's Harbor, New York, that spring, and was at Beaver Dams, the battle that ensued following Laura Secord's report of American troop movements to Lieutenant Fitzgibbon. In the summer of 1814, he led his company during the assault on the Americans at Fort Erie. Captain Bradley was entitled to substantial land grants as a retired officer, and like many of the officers, he located his lands in several strategic locations. He had his initial farm inland near South March rather than along the Ottawa River with most of the other officers and gentleman immigrant Hamnet Penny, whose great house there is now a historic site and museum. But Bradley exchanged a lot in Goulburn for an important mill site on the stream in Huntley, and uh, he and Captain Weatherly both claimed lands on the Rideau River in Gloucester Township, just north of Bradish Billings. Bradley's grant there would later be the farm of his son Clements, and his grandchildren would profit from subdividing those lands for what became Eastview, the later city of Vanier. Captain now, Bradley wrote from Montreal in July of 1819, requesting that his half-pay pension be paid in Canada rather than through his agents in London, and he was soon occupying his land in March Township. He wrote to Philemon Wright in Hull in November, asking him to send 50 or 100 good staves, as I am building a small hut to cover my people for the winter. The following May, he wrote to the Wrights from Montreal, asking to have 15 bushels of seed potatoes delivered to his servant John Cook via Mr. Bezerer. And in December, he wrote from Richmond to Ruggles Wright, having heard from Captain Le Breton at Britannia that a Mr. Bancroft of Hull had offered Le Breton hay off of a beaver meadow on one of Bradley's lots in March. He warned Wright that he would subject himself to prosecution if he purchased from Bancroft the stolen hay. In 1828, the War Office surveyed retired officers as to their willingness to serve. William replied, I am ready at any moment to serve my king and country when called upon. Captain Bradley died that year at Clements's farm in Gloucester, and he was interred in the old Sandy Hill cemeteries. Following Clements's death and the opening of Beechwood in 1873, William and Sands, who must have been removed already from the old Barracks Hill Cemetery to Sandy Hill, and six other members of the family were moved to Beechwood in 1876. At the New Brunswick Museum in St. John, we have marked the War of 1812 with an exhibition originally mounted in 2013, which will continue until the end of the year. We get a but the war uh, did not only involve um, upper and lower Canadians. It was a pan-Canadian war, if I can use that national term, and its nature is perfectly encapsulated by the creation and march of the 104th Regiment of Foot. Like the 100th Regiment reenactment unit here today, the 104th was a British regiment of the line. But the 104th was the only line regiment raised mainly in British North America, and not just in New Brunswick, but in Nova Scotia, Lower and Upper Canada. And I want to call on family representative Dave Aldous and a Bradley descendant to unveil the plaque. Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to call upon uh, Northern Canon Rogers Young, who also was a Bradley descendant, to do the blessing. Today we give thanks for the life, for the service of Captain William Brown Bradley. We come to be thankful for his legacy, for all that he has given to this wonderful country of Canada, to be thankful for his example of faithfulness and loyalty, to ask for God's blessing upon his memory, upon ourselves as we gather today, that we may live up to this legacy of faithfulness and duty, and that we may remember him with pride.